Assalamualaikum dan uh, selamat kembali ke episod 4 Fakir Fikir Hari ini kita ada seorang tetamu yang uh, istimewa Fakir Fikir ni nama dia datang daripada kita punya kekurangan lah Daripada cara kita nak berfikir dan memahami Jadi kita selalu nak cari uh, area yang baru yang kita belum pernah fahami Untuk kita ajak sembang dan bincang Dan hari ini kita ada satu tetamu yang uh, saya rasa sangat istimewa uh, Dia run satu company nama Afilia dan Afilia ni is a company yang tengah membangunkan teknologi uh, wireless charging tapi untuk space application and he is Malaysian and nama dia Cik Razlan. So cerita sikit lah macam mana you boleh come about with this idea nak buat uh, wireless charging untuk space application hmm. yang kita tahu wireless charging ni untuk phone hmm. je. Okay lah. Hmm. But before that, hmm. thank you so much for inviting me. It, ha, it ha. is a huge pleasure for me and my team as well lah. Uh, and macam mana dapat idea tu background saya pun memang dah dalam electrical electronic engineering dan saya pun sebenarnya buat uh, research dalam bidang wireless charging technology tu sebenarnya okay, okay. Uh, so uh, tapi dalam masa yang sama saya pun dah dapat pendedahan pasal startup-startup, dunia startup so saya pun teringin teknologi wireless charging ni saya nampak uh, jadi jadi startup so that's where kita orang explore, saya explore nak buat wireless charging untuk phone hmm. Konon macam handphone ni duduk dalam bilik tak perlu nak charge semua As long as you are in the room, you boleh dapat signal wireless charging right, uh, right, Macam right, dapat right. wifi signal That would be a good idea That would be, yeah, be, be a good idea Yeah, 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 yeah. Tapi lepas kita orang dah explore, explore, explore Biasalah, the reality hit <laughs> So benda tu memang tak boleh buat <laughs> uh, Oh tak boleh buat? Sebenarnya tak boleh buat Kenapa tak boleh buat? Sebab ada satu teori ni kita panggil inverse square law. Bear, bear with me kalau macam sama macam wifi wifi signal ni dapat okay. wifi signal kan. Wifi signal dia punya signal tu dia macam 360 semua arah. Isunya adalah lagi jauh signal tu pergi power dia lagi drop. Dia bukan drop uh, drop straight, dia memang ha oh, macam tu. Phone okay. pakai berapa watt bila dia orang charging berapa watt dia boleh right now uh. sama macam saya punya handphone juga uh. biasa je uh. not even like fast charging yang 5 minit macam tu. Uh -huh. 2 jam ambil 18 watt. So, so, memang si, tak boleh Memang lah, tak je. boleh okay. So kalau dalam bilik tak boleh Then macam mana you nak Buat Untuk space huh. ha. Di sinilah uh. Kenapa untuk space boleh menjadi Ada dua faktor Satu wireless charging ni Kita tak boleh buat dia pergi semua arah Dia kena buat satu point ke satu point Dia kena fokus Tertumpu satu point. lah Tertumpu Nak buat tertumpu pula hmm. Dekat bumi ni sebenarnya susah nak buat. Satu sebab ada faktor keselamatan. Sebab energi ni tinggi sangat, borong lalu semua innalillah. Memang microwave microwave oven lah literally. So kalau dekat angkasa, mana ada burung apa semua. You nak apa? Apa pula microwave pula? Yang kita charge phone ni pakai microwave. Ah uh, tak juga. Betul uh, apa? Kenapa you cakap pasal microwave? Sebab signal signal ni semuanya adalah dalam microwave punya frekuensi. Phone kita tak charge pakai microwave. Uh, kalau phone macam wire cable biasa je. Okey cable lah. Uh -huh. Tapi yang wireless charging phone tu pakai microwave juga. Dia pakai induction base. Okay, Indu uh, so <laughs> kalau kalau induction, base induction ni dia bukan macam signal lah. Dia magnetic. Macam alam magnetic juga lah. Bezanya kita orang microwave hmm. dengan macam handphone pakai wireless charging tu adalah wireless charging tu dia betul betul pakai coil. Kena align Macam tu baru dia dapat transfer power ha, Dia pakai okay. coil macam tu Kalau kita pula Signal betul-betul macam signal macam wifi signal macam tu Dia betul-betul radio signal macam tu okay. ha, Dia dia bukan macam uh, Ada coil-coil uh, Dapat wifi Coil-coil tu tak ada Coil ni apa benda? Coil ni macam uh, Wire gulung bla 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 macam tu lah so that's different. I still don't understand macam mana you're transferring energy from one coil to another. So untuk teknologi kita, uh, kita pakai radio signal ataupun microwave. Caranya adalah sebiji macam antena juga. Mm -hmm. Bila antena tu keluar signal, except that kita ada banyak beribu-ribu antena. Kita hantar signal, fokus, kita manipulatekan signal tu uh, ke uh, receiver juga. Ada antena juga untuk terima power tu. Oh. Terima signal tu oh. ha. Ha. So, so dengan cara tu You boleh hantar Lebih daripada like, Apa yang you pakai untuk phone tadi tu ha. Ha. How, how, much, how much power you boleh hantar We are talking about kilo, level kilowatt Memang level kilowatt So right now kita punya range teknologi kita Kita buat antara 1 kilowatt Sampai all the way up to 10 kilowatt ha. 
Okey. Saya macam tu. Daripada jarak berapa jauh? Buat masa ni jarak 1 km. 1 km. 1 km. Ha. Dari segi teori dia kalau 1 km kalau nak jarak lagi jauh, then kita pi antena tu buat lagi besar. The receiver antenna. Both receiver, Both receiver dengan transmitter. transmit tu. Ha ah. Ha ah. Okey. Ha So sekarang ni you kata nak buat charging untuk satelit di angkasa lepas. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. So satelit ni dia duduk dekat-dekat ke you nak pergi dekat dengan dia ke macam mana? How how is it going to work? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ha. So iaitu antara technical challenges yang satu dunia tengah selesaikan lah termasuk kita juga. Mm-hmm. So cara yang adalah uh, dua cara. Cara pertama which kita tak buat lah. Cara pertama yang adalah kita punya station charging sendiri akan pergi dekat customer punya satellite dalam jarak bila dalam jarak 1 km kita akan charge. Okey, masa kita pun uh, cabutlah kita chau. Okey. Masalahnya kalau buat macam tu, kita satellite sendiri kita perlukan banyak tenaga untuk bergerak-gerak pergi ke customer satellite sana, customer satellite sini. Terlalu banyak sangat tenaga kita belanjakan untuk nak bergerak. Cara keduanya adalah which apa yang kita buat sekarang ni kita bina banyak-banyak station charging dekat equator dekat garisan khatulistiwa uh-huh. banyak-banyak uh-huh. so that kita tak perlu gerak mana-mana asalkan customer lalu je dalam coverage kita dapat charge lalu je dapat lalu je dapat so you your charging station tu dekat bumi ke dekat angkasa lepas dekat angkasa lepas oh dekat angkasa lepas yes betul so your you, you punya target ni ialah satellite jenis apa yang you nak charge ni Satellite jenis actually is jenis medium to large satellite. Mm-hmm. So maksudnya we are talking about satellite yang like at least 500 kg punya berat mm-hmm. where dia orang perlukan tenaga yang besar tapi dalam masa yang sama dia orang tanah uh, satellite tu jadi besar sangat. So so okay. Apa yang kita value kita contribute adalah contoh satellite macam Starlink, mm-hmm. satellite yang provide ke internet kepada people on earth dia orang perlukan solar panel besar mm-hmm. uh, sebab elektrik dia tak cukup uh, so kalau satellite tu sendiri nak hantar internet lagi ramai orang dia orang perlukan tenaga lagi banyak yeah. uh, so caranya nak counter itu adalah dia orang okey solar panel dia orang letak je solar panel tapi tak perlu tak perlu besar sangat pun hanya installkan satu receiver kita saiz tu fit saja kecil je tapi kita pak min power yang, la- yang lagi tinggi pada dia orang okey but dia orang punya satellite dia on low, low earth orbit they moving very fast what? 45 minutes kan exactly. dia orbit so very how, fast ha, macam mana you kalau you kata you punya satellite sebelum stationary Betul. On the equator. Betul. Entah macam mana tu dia. Ha. How 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 many the seconds ke apa ke because unless you tracking, you tracking ke tak macam mana? Ada tracking. Oh yeah. tracking lah. Ya. Yeah. So that is where everyone is trying to solve right now into the earth. So caranya from our side is dalam coverage tu dia ada masa setengah jam. So ada setengah jam dia 1 km so dah out of coverage dah. So dalam masa setengah jam tu dia intersect dengan kita pergi charging station tu setengah jam hmm. memang memang But sangat if they orbiting the planet at 45 minutes sekali orbit dan macam ni setengah jam tu that seems to be like you probably have like 5 minutes yeah. dekat you actually uh, satu orbit dekat low of orbit ni ha. uh, satu orbit mengambil masa 90 minit 90 minit okey uh, 90 minit so daripada 90 minit tu setengah jam tu ada dalam coverage kita kita pergi wait the, the international space station 90 minit ni sama, betul. Oh, bukan 40 minit, so I got it wrong. Okay. Uh-huh. 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 So, as long as dia dalam coverage, setengah jam. Tapi, uh, 90 minit dalam masa sehari, dia orbit banyak kali. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, yeah, dia yeah. orbit banyak kali. So, maksudnya dalam satu hari, kita charge selama 30 minit, tapi banyak kali. 30 minit, uh, dia dah kecau, datang balik. Macam mana minutes. you kata 30 minit dah? Saya tak nampak lagi. Maksudnya, kata dia pusing 90 minit. Uh-huh. For 360 degrees, uh-huh. right? 30 minit, dia 120 degree punya arc. Right? So, from that far to that far, yeah. you kata you punya te- transmitter depending on distance and yeah. law of inverse. Inverse square law uh. hanya applicable kalau signal kita transmit tu semua Wah. arah. Wah. Kalau you need uh, kita pergi direct. Directional, okay. Directional. Then doesn't, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't apply. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, dia ada satu term ni panggil power beaming lah. Okay. Uh, power beaming, maksudnya kita bukan Uh, macam semua lah kita fokus satu je so dia bukanlah exactly like inverse square law macam tu lah sebab kita dah fokus 100% tu ke sana juga right 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 right, right, right. so kalau you nak 
tembak dekat dia and you kata you punya jarak how far you going to be from the right uh, now client satellite satu kilometer so that means you punya orbit dengan dia punya orbit dekat lah kalau ikut dekat uh-huh. what is the separation minimum separation for satellites uh. there are a lot of number but hmm. we are talking about a range of satu uh, kilometers of range lah hmm. lain satellite customer lain dia berjarak okay. uh, but uh, that is why uh, we are not the only startup yang tengah solvekan um, the challenges of kita panggil orbiter mechanics lah mm-hmm. orbiter macam mana mm-hmm. that is why at the same time teknologi wireless charging yang sama ni kita pergi ke bulan juga maksudnya Se- sebab uh, kalau okey so kalau untuk law of orbit dia ada technical challenge dari segi orbit tu sama ada berapa point dia accuracy semua yang bergerak jauh macam mana nak stay consistent so kalau dekat bulan we are not talking about bina satellite nak orbit bulan tu we are talking about just daripada tanah ke tanah je memang tak ke mana-mana what do you mean tanah ke tanah what do you mean yeah. so dekat bulan uh-huh. uh, instead of kita, kita tak ada nak chargekan satellite dekat bulan kita nak chargekan rover kereta-kereta kecil uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, so kereta-kereta kecil yang ada dekat tanah ni kita nak wirelessly charge bukan daripada langit pergi ke rover tapi daripada tanah Uh, on the surface the base station ke dekat lah. base station yang tu juga okay. uh-huh. so that is why on the law of orbit um, the orbit pay challenges yang tu we are solving it but at the same time kita buat untuk projek bulan juga ok so you punya target sekarang ialah untuk charge satellite dan also do the moon base thing lah mm-hmm. right? so my question yang tentang nak charge satellite ni mm. Uh, clearly you nak kena ada a lot of power on board lah you nak charge orang lain kan betul so how big does your solar panel have to be and yeah. are you carrying a lot of battery what's the satellite size that you looking at yeah. it's actually for our case memang besar we are talking about paling kecil pun to get the 1 km kita pergi antena size kena 8 meter kali 8 meter that's memang your besar. transmitter betul the, on the receiving end berapa besar on the receiving end we are talking about 2 meter kali 2 meter besar juga besar juga memang hmm. besar so that is why untuk case kita to hmm. make it valuable for the customer punya case memang kena deliver elektrik yang tinggi juga sebab kalau dia orang install antena besar tapi hantar elektrik sikit je so doesn't make sense baik install solar panel je hmm. ha, so uh, that is why for our case to make it viable we have to transmit really really high energy to make it valuable to them satu lagi if you are charging uh, leo satellite your orbit degrade lot faster dah uh, actually yes so how long can your satellite stay in orbit um, yeah. to make it how long do you need for it to stay in orbit to make it worthwhile and how do you plan to make it stay in orbit yeah so to make it worthwhile kena follow customer peer requirement so if customer can go all the way between three to five years That is also our goal, 3 to 5 years. How to make it supaya tak jadi sampah, supaya dia boleh stay orbit tu, that's where the electric propulsion technology comes in. When yeah. you say electric propulsion, exactly what do you mean? Yeah. So, for satellites, satellite ni macam mana dia orang bergerak ataupun dia terapung macam tu saja. Hmm. Macam mana dia nak bergerak ke kiri, ke kanan, ke atas, ke bawah, dia menggunakan uh, satu teknologi ni kita panggil propulsion. Propulsion ni apa? Mm-hmm. Propulsion ni adalah dia satu teknologi untuk keluarkan like macam api macam tu. Hmm. So macam sama macam kalau roket yang bawah tu yang keluar api brrr, macam tu itu kita panggil propulsion lah. Hmm. Sama juga untuk satellite dia ada propulsion juga. Uh, except dia punya brrr, tu dia tak pakai api. Cold gas lah. Dia pakai elektrik. Pakai elektrik ya. Uh-huh. So I mean, dia lain sikit lah. Uh, uh-huh. Apa dia? What is the name of that technology tu? Yeah. Apa dia pakai? So Generally, dia orang panggil electric propulsion mm-hmm. rather than like chemical propulsion. Mm-hmm. Chemical is like rocket lah, keluar api. Mm-hmm. Electric propulsion ni bezanya adalah instead of dia keluarkan api, mm-hmm. dia keluarkan elektron. Okay. So elektron-elektron tu bila dia dia apa? Dia keluarkan elektron semua, dia boleh bergerak. So yang tu lah yang teknologi yang dipakaikan oleh uh, satellite-satellite dekat angkasa lah. Okay. Uh-huh. So your satellite ni, how big does it have to be? Memang we are talking about like 8 times 8 meter. Itu dia punya, baru dia punya transmitter. Yang tu baru dia punya transmitter. Ha. Uh-huh. Dengan bateri dengan apa bagai semua. Yang, yang tu termasuk dengan bateri juga. So apa yang kita buat sebenarnya, kita punya teknologi wireless power ni, kita buat dalam bentuk macam tiles, tiles petak-petak, where semua tas ni boleh berlipat-lipat 
Okay. Ha, so bila dah lipat dulu, letak dalam poket, hmm. pergi ke angkasa, masa dia dia buka, buka lah. hmm. dia buka origami style lah. Ya, origami style. Hmm. Kita beta sendiri pun dia um, dia macam satu keping besar. On one side ada solar panel, dalam tu sendiri ada bateri. Ha, so daripada solar panel dapatkan solar energy which is our source of power and then dalam tu akan store dalam bateri. Daripada bateri tu akan transmit um, convert bateri DC power pergi ke RF contohlah. So I'm still trying to wrap my mind around how yeah. you going to do this sebab like you say lah the orbital mechanic is going to be quite hell sebab you are still on low earth orbit so you're spinning quite fast as well sama yeah. dengan satellite-satellite tu and uh, somehow you need to hold on to one satellite for half an hour yeah. right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're running equatorial mm -hmm. punya orbit mm -hmm. and a lot of them are going this way that way yeah. bola orbit lah macam-macam orbit ada kan yeah betul-betul mm. of course it is really difficult lah um, like for our case that is why dia ada dua technical uh, challenges lah orbit tu satu supaya macam mana boleh stay boleh fokus pada satellite yang semua bergerak laju juga another aspect kita boleh try kurangkan challenge yang tu melalui teknologi wireless power so wireless power itself tu kita kena dua aspek kita boleh pergi range yang sangat jauh keduanya kita pergi pointing accuracy tu okay. ha, kita pointing pun kena dua benda satu dia boleh adjust sikit 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 tepat di tepat tu keduanya adalah kita boleh respon tu cepat tak ada macam satellite dah jauh dah kita baru boleh uh, baru delay nak tukar dp angle tu so that is why like this is a huge technical challenge for us and in terms of the orbit tu sementara tengah selesaikan masalah tu hmm. that's where kita pay partnership dengan this uh, Canadian peer space company comes in so nama company ni panggil Spacium dia orang memang bina stesen angkasa tapi bukan astronot tapi dia macam RNR dekat plus highway. So semua customer satellite memang pergi kepada dia untuk nak uh, isi minyak semula. Satellite pun ada minyak juga. They Plus already in space. They will be launching uh, next year. Okay. I believe it is next year. Yeah. They carrying what liquid propellant, gas propellant what are they carrying? They they are carrying uh, liquid propellant, uh, actually gas um Yeah, and dia orang nak buat teknologi demonstrasi dengan their own another uh, partner. Yeah. So their satellites actually going to connect physically to other satellites and correct. Customer mereka be customer sendiri akan pergi ke stesen angkasa dia orang uh, docking wow, isi minyak. Oh. Dia orang pun target sama juga this uh, low earth orbit ni satellite juga. Sama juga low earth orbit juga. Kenapa you focus kat low earth orbit ni satellite? Kenapa tak like geo stationary ni satellite? Ya. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where the money comes in. Banyak yeah. kat situ. Banyak dekat situ. Sebab uh, berdasarkan Euro Consult uh, market report dijangka setiap tahun sampai tahun 2031 I believe, setiap tahun dijangka akan launch 1800 satellite setiap tahun and that's that's why there is a money lah and sampai ke tahun 2030 expected jumlah satellite dekat uh, low of orbit ni we are talking about tens of thousands at least mm -hmm. like 20,000 satellite that's belum campur Elon punya Starlink ke dah campur? itu dah campur dah dah campur dah? dah, campur dah. dia dah. sendiri nak hantar 30,000? Uh, dia sendiri dah 30,000 hmm. campur dengan competitor lain hmm. nak hantar juga berpuluh ribu juga hmm. Hmm. so that is why Uh, that is why there is a viable market opportunity at there lah sebab banyak satellite. Uh, kalau if we are talking about takat hantar dua tiga satellite saja, the money is not there lah. Cerita sikit, bila you buat dengan dengan uh, apa nama dia, Spacium ni kan, mm -hmm. how, how is it going to work? Dia, dia punya cerita lain, dia nak bawa benda lain. You nak bawa wireless pula. So how are you, you working dengan Spacium? Ya, yeah. so Spacium uh, what they do dia orang bina macam RNR, stesen RNR dekat uh, dekat angkasa. Sama macam RNR juga ada isi minyak, ada kedai runcit, ada pam tayar semua. Dia orang nak buat tiga benda. Satu, isi minyak satellite. Keduanya, dia orang ada robotic arm where dia orang boleh nak repair satellite ataupun uh, satellite ni dia nak modify sikit, nak pasang assembly part-part-part dekat angkasa. Ketiga, dia orang nak recharge. Uh, tapi dia orang tak ada teknologi untuk nak recharge-kan satellite. So di situlah dia orang akan pakai kita pakai teknologi uh, wireless charging bay teknologi melekat pada uh, spacing pada stesen angkasa untuk 
transfer power. Uh, from our side, benefitnya apa yang like the kind of service that we will be buying from Spaceium adalah robotic arm tu, diorang akan bantu installkan kita punya receiver ni, nak install pada customer ni, diorang akan installkan receiver pada kita punya customer pay satellite dekat kata. Right. Because the problem here is untuk kita nak chargekan customer pay satellite, diorang kena install kita punya receiver. Mm -hmm. Tapi kalau diorang punya satellite dah dekat angkasa, macam mana nak install? But the question I nak tanya is, low earth orbit satellites have very short lifespan anyway. Right? Hmm. So why not just wait until the new ones go up? Ah. The so reason why... They have why... to be replaced. Ha, kawai, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> ah, that, that is the statement huh. we are talking about a few years ago. Okay. Like, Two three years ago. Okay. But now, uh -huh. if the satellite itself, kita boleh extendkan dia punya life, why not? Tak payah hantar satellite baru, tak payah capital lagi banyak. Satellite sama juga, boleh buat duit lagi, sama lagi buat duit. Ha. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. SpaceX, I tak tahu lah what the actual cost of launch anymore per kilo kan, because they want to drop it by so much, right? Mm -hmm. Is it still worthwhile to do this and not just send satellites and bring them back down and send them up again and bring them back down? It depends on the the satellite manufacturer why is a business model. Uh, some satellite manufacturer, their business model is they just want to send send a satellite if it can provide value to our customer, say provide internet to people down on earth. If we don't need to send another asset, then we save money. Uh, certain kind of satellite satellite manufacturer where their business model is if we want a new kind of satellite that can do amazing capabilities and I want it tomorrow, then they have to keep sending new satellite, new satellite, new satellite. So it all depends on what is their own customer requirement. So yeah, that is the case lah. Right now, you kata you are the competitors lah. Banyak ke company yang tengah memikirkan? This is like a really big problem ke apa? Competitor dengan big problem. Huh. Actually, masalah tenaga untuk satellite ni is a 4.4 billion dollar problem. How, macam macam mana how's it for 1.4 billion? Ya, 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 ya. Macam contohnya, hmm. uh, set, ada, contoh ada satu satellite, tahun lepas, awal tahun lepas, nama company ni Astranis. Okay. Astranis. Dia orang hantar satellite dia orang dekat, dah sampai ke angkasa untuk nak provide internet kepada people dekat Alaska. Tapi apa yang berlaku ni adalah, dia orang punya solar panel, punya teknologi tu malfunction. Okay. Fail. So, apabila dah fail, elektrik tak ada. The electric tak ada, satellite tak boleh operate Then satellite tu dah berjuta dolar tu Gone, tak boleh buat apa Sebab elektrik right. memang tak ada right. uh, So that's how uh, Ini baru satu contoh uh, Berapa banyak duit dah belanja Tapi tak boleh tak boleh menjana duit Sebab set, aset tu dah tak boleh berfungsi So ini baru satu contoh Ada contoh lain juga Nama company ni panggil SES SES Dia based dekat Luxembourg But it's all around the world lah This, this big company Apa yang berlaku adalah Dia orang punya elektrik pun ada isu dekat satellite tu. Satellite tu besar, berjuta dolar. Disebabkan satellite tu tak boleh provide. Then, dia orang terpaksa instead of launching, I don't remember exactly the number, say 6 satellite. Instead of hantar 6 satellite, dia orang tambah lagi satu satellite. Just nak cover up satellite yang rosak. yang dah rosak tu. Hmm. Isu elektrik ni, dekat angkasa ni, dia bukan saja satellite. Sama juga dekat bulan dekat planet Maris juga. Example dekat bulan baru-baru ni India punya mm -hmm. space program ISRO mm -hmm. where they became the I believe the third country, the fourth ever country to land on the moon. First uh, to land on the polar yeah. region right? Well, exactly. Dekat mm -hmm. South Pole punya region. Mm -hmm. uh, tapi disebabkan waktu malam dia panjang sangat mm -hmm. like Kalau dekat bumi, waktu malam kita dalam 12 jam. Yeah. Kalau dekat bulan, waktu malam ni 14 hari. Yeah. Lama sangat. So, kalau 14 hari, sumber elektrik nak pakai solar panel, tak ada matahari pun. Yeah. Tak ada elektrik. Right. So, lalas habis 14 hari tu, uh, 14 hari malam tu, nak turn on pun dah tak, dah tak boleh dah. So, mm -hmm. that's where dah banyak mission, semua terbantut, semua dah space mission ended hanya sebab isu elektrik. So, that is why we, for Avilia, we are trying to solve that issue. Dari segi kompetitor, okay. tahun dalam tahun 22, dalam dunia ni betul-betul yang serius pun ada dua saja startup. Satu Afilia, kita daripada Malaysia. Lagi satu daripada UK, namanya Space Power. But long story short, mm -hmm. through for year 22, the ex-co-founder, bekas pengasas untuk Space Power tu, our competitor, our only competitor masuk tu, kita orang contact, and that guy eventually join kita orang. Oh. As an advisor. Uh, dia join kita orang sebagai advisor. 
And we have discussed a lot of things among ourselves, in, including our company's own direction. We genuinely believe that, like even, okay, untuk low of orbit, banyak satellite, the market is big. Tapi we believe that the market is even bigger dekat bulan. So that is why right now, uh, while we are solving the technical challenges untuk low of orbit, we are also entering the moon market right now. Uh, you are planning to be like, what, like a grid kind of thing? Yes. Yes, yes. Exactly like contoh macam TNB, bina pencang wire elektrik semua, tapi bezanya adalah untuk apa kita nak buat dekat bulan, kita tak buat macam wire, kita buat wireless. Dia bezanya adalah kita nak supply ke electricity daripada kawasan macam siang untuk deliver electricity wirelessly kepada kawasan kawah-kawah bulan yang memang gelap. Sebab di situ semua sumber ekonomi dekat bulan ni adalah air. Dia bukan air, dia ice cube lah, water ice. Mm -hmm. ha, sebab water ice ni penting daripada hidrogen, oksigen, oksigen manusia nak bernafas so, sebab tu penting. Tapi water ice ni banyak ada dekat kawasan yang gelap saja. Mm -hmm. Dekat kawasan gelap nak ada solar panel, solar solar electricity memang tak boleh. Mm -hmm. So that's why kita deliver electricity kepada apa-apa mission. So so at what stage is the technology at right now? Yeah. So right now kalau dari segi technology readiness level daripada 1 sampai lah 9, I believe 9. Uh, so we are entering at stage 3. What does that mean? Uh, trigger meaning we are building the working prototype. It's like the proof of concept of technology oh, kita. Proof of concept lah sekarang. Yeah. Of course kita sekarang awal tapi that's the honestly there is a main difference between style Malaysian and also the rest of the world. Sebab when it comes to membina startup yang berasaskan teknologi yang R&D dia memang agak intensif we have to talk to the customer first before kita start R&D uh, sebab R&D ni not only is very hard but also menggunakan banyak sangat duit jadi apabila customer pun tak ada kita bina je teknologi contoh dah belanja 5 tahun dah belanja berjuta dolar dah tiba-tiba awak bina teknologi yang salah, customer pun tak relevan, why why you are building this, are, it, it doesn't bring any value. Uh, even, even, yang tu that's the worst uh, case scenario. Even like a similarly like least worst case scenario, like our competitor, uh, hmm. Space Power dekat UK hmm. tu, uh, who eventually joined us. Kenapa dia give up? Okay. Uh, dia, dia, okay. dia orang tak give up lagi, tak give up lagi, okay, tak give up okay. lagi okay. but there is a huge challenge for them. Uh. Uh. Beza kami, Afilia, and also that company, uh, Space Power. Even there's new new competitors sekarang ni, buat style lebih kurang sama dengan Space Power. Beza yang adalah, dia orang pakai laser. Laser. Okay. Dia orang pakai you laser. Pakai? Kita pakai radio signal. Microwave. Microwave. Okay. Laser issue ni adalah, dia orang dah dapat government grant, a lot, like millions of pounds, bina teknologi, buat laser, oh menjadi like from a point, deliver laser power to a receiver. But there's an issue. Hmm. Apabila when they are talking, nak dapatkan approval daripada regulatory body dekat US panggil FAA, mm -hmm. they were mad. They were freaking mad at these UK companies. Do you know why? Because laser. Because laser, kalau buat high power, is a weapon. Hmm. No argument is a weapon already. Mm. The last thing we want is Star Wars dekat angkasa. Semua mm. pium 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 berperang perang dunia ketiga dekat angkasa. That's right. the last thing we want to do, uh, to happen. And so now, dia orang bina teknologi not not only to customer before buat R&D tu, regulation body pun tak uh, tak bincang dulu. Then the money gone. So it's like the challenge here apabila I believe all the research you can understand bila okay, nak so, ubah so yeah. so okay so you're right so okay. high powered laser boleh jadi weapon yeah. but high powered microwave also boleh jadi weapon okay so, <laughs> you're totally correct uh, you're totally that. correct uh, 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 this is a dilemma for us uh, <laughs> which makes an even better case to go to the moon tak tahu ceritanya ah uh, uh, okay laser boleh jadi weapon orang kata laser nak pergi ke customer based satellite Laser ni orang kata sampai berlubang lah. Okay. Okay, berlubang. Microwave, it can be a weapon. But, dia sampai ke tahap kita panaskan. How convenient. Um, kita tak nak lah macam sampai ter terpanaskan customer per satellite sampai hangus semua. Maksudnya kita kena sama. Malaysia kena sama pula kan. Hmm. <laughs> tak tertutup pasal pula kan. <laughs> How convenient. Uh -huh. How convenient. Dekat bulan, bila waktu malam tu, 
dia punya sejuk tu which is a bad news for space company apa lagi ke bulan dia punya sejuk tu can go as low as negative 200 degree celsius oh negative 200 and sikit there lagi is... you get liquid hydrogen sorry sikit lagi dapat liquid hydrogen ah, itulah <laughs> <laughs> betul betul ha. so Uh, banyak uh, komponen-komponen elektronik uh, actually anything lah tak boleh operate sampai sejuk-sejuk sangat negatif 200 degree celsius how convenient for our case not only kita provide electricity we can also tolong panaskan remote heating equipment. remote yeah. heating ya yeah. ok ha. ok <laughs> so, so dia punya cerita dia sekarang ni you are building a prototype hmm. to be tested on earth dulu lah betul precisely And uh, uh, and how far away are you from completing the prototype? Yeah. So right now, Alhamdulillah, kita dah dapat credit peer funding, mm -hmm. which yeah. Thank you, credit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh. Uh, so, but because of the funding is quite limited for our case, hundred thousand ringgit. Inshallah, within quarter two, either bulan lima atau bulan enam, hmm. we will be conducting a ground demonstration dekat Sirim kat sini insyaAllah dia ke, memang kecil je kecil eh, jarak pendek je we are talking about 50 cm je setengah meter okay. memang kecil but just to share this is where our thought process is different orang lain our new competitor actually there's only a few ada 2-3 saja. Mm -hmm. uh, ada Canada US dekat UK mm -hmm. diorang bina prototype ok buat long range wow, buat long range diorang boleh buat Uh, but of course, nak bina prototype long range tu mahal. But when we talk to customer, betul-betul paling penting is not just a wireless range. Paling utama sebenarnya dua benda. Can you make the size smaller? And also number two, can you make the nak transmit electricity the entire system to efficient? Because it doesn't make sense you can go say even satu juta kilometer pun. DP efficiency tu sangat rendah. Eh? Ha. So it doesn't make sense sebab bila kita convert ke unit economics of it cost per kilowatt hour is very high so we are talking about okay let's say customer nak 100 watt hmm. tapi disebabkan efficiency kita sangat rendah customer nak 100 watt kita kena pump me 1 kilowatt this is not good news right. so that's why for our case the prototype that we are currently building that we will be demonstrating our main point here is not to show that uh, we can go long range but we are showing that we can make our system way smaller and also way efficient what's the target what, how many percent efficiency are you looking yeah. at the best in the world right now uh. is 30 percent 30 plus percent here for the us our goal as of now we are the maximum is 70 percent but we do expect kalau dia jadi lagi rendah we are talking about like 50 to 60 percent which is still way higher and just nak berkongsi apa beza teknologi kita dengan yang orang lain yang buat microwave juga mm -hmm. uh, so sebab tadi earlier in our conversation we are comparing antara us microwave dengan laser mm -hmm. tapi kalau comparing kita pay microwave pay teknologi micro, dengan microwave yang lain apa bezanya mm, beza. yeah. so diorang ni microwave diorang buat frekuensi 10 gigahertz so maybe it doesn't make sense but yeah just uh, take that in mind 10 gigahertz for us kita buat lagi tinggi frekuensi and difference is that but but kalau RF engineering ni kalau sorry sorry for being technical lah kan frekuensi kalau lagi tinggi nak design tu lagi susah terutamanya nak bagi lagi efficient okey so buat kenapa you pilih yang lebih tinggi sebab nak buat uh, size tu lagi kecil size apa uh, size antena tu sendiri Ha. Kenapa boleh lagi kecil bila frekuensi lagi tinggi? Sebab kalau frekuensi lagi tinggi, uh, kalau spesifiknya dia punya wavelength lah. Mm -hmm. Wavelength dia lagi halus. Yeah. Apabila wavelength lagi halus, antena tu boleh lagi kecil. I see. Ya. Yeah. 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 Uh, but in terms of not manufacturing process dia sebab dia halus, bukan saja manufacturing process, but also efficiency dia sangat susah nak bagi dia masih tinggi efficiency dia. Uh, sebab biasanya kalau frekuensi lagi tinggi, mm -hmm efficiency dia lagi drop biasanya so that's why we are we managed to solve already that's okay. what it means lah the, the longer the wave the farther it can go and sustain the energy yes. right yes, the shorter correct. the wave it can carry uh, more intensity but it cannot go far exactly okay 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 okay, okay. but just to share hmm. um, just to share for communication macam BBC radio news and hmm. all hmm. bila frekuensi lagi tinggi Uh, it can go dekat saja. Yeah. 
sama juga macam 5G sekarang kan macam mm-hmm. menara 5G coverage dia kecil sebab kecil. frekuensi dia tinggi yeah. but for the case of menggunakan radio signal untuk tenaga bukan untuk komunikasi untuk tenaga dari segi teori tu kita panggil beam collection efficiency BCE okay. kalau frekuensi lagi tinggi you boleh pergi lagi jauh sebenarnya dia terbalik Oh. Ah, untuk kalau untuk komunikasi pia, macam 5G. Oh because yang tu dia pergi omnidirectional lah. Is that, is that... Exactly. Exactly. So so now uh, you are working at 100 huh? gigahertz. We are now working at 24 sebenarnya. 24. Ya orang lain pia, they work only 10. up to 10. Huh. Kita orang more than twice. Oh more than twice. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you looking at 24 gigahertz sekarang. Yeah. So at that 24 gigahertz you targeting 70% efficiency. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, apa dia punya drawback? Dia mesti ada drawback dia kan? What's the drawback? You you require bigger equipment ke? You more power ke apa dia? One of the short term punya drawback is uh, kalau nak buat R&D tu untuk high frequency ni equipment-equipment kita pakai ni memang mahal. Ada satu equipment ni panggil oscilloscope. Mm-hmm. Uh, oscilloscope ni apa fungsi? Fungsinya Uh, kalau kita buat circuit, kita nak tengok uh, elektrik dia, apa dia punya karakteristik. Mm-hmm. So, our case, oscilloscope biasa contoh harga RM2,000 boleh dapat di China. Tapi for our case, sebab frekuensi dia tinggi sangat, that equipment saja, it can go to $300,000. Oh. Really, really expensive. I see, I see. Yeah, I see, really I see, expensive. I see, I see. Cost is higher lah, ceritanya yeah. sebenarnya ni. Yeah, the R&D cost itself is way higher. Yeah. And also, of course, the design itself memang sangat susah. But that's where, for our case, apabila kita compete dekat taraf global ni dengan competitor not only from the likes of US and the Americans and the UK and the Japan, it is important for our case to macam mana pun we have to figure out how to make it cheaper our situation, but also work at a really high intensity with technology capability to compete with them. So for the case of equipment mahal, for our case kita tak beli, so kita sewa. Ataupun kita work with any existing facility dekat Malaysia Yang ada yang, yang dah ada equipment dulu So you're, you're looking to have that uh, prototype ready this year? We are planning right now sama ada bulan 5 atau bulan 6 Bulan 6 okay. yeah. so, so the next step once you dah able to produce this and prove What is the next step lepas tu? Yeah. Good question hmm. So for this year in terms of technology progress This year our goal is to fine tune our prototype according to the to our prospect customer right. uh, customer kita dah ada requirement kita find to kita prototype datangkan kehendak dia orang and then next step tahun 25 and also 26 is where kita nak buat technology demonstrasi demonstrasi dekat angkasa at least three mission mission satu dengan dua around uh, bumi juga low of orbit juga mm-hmm. third punya technology demonstrasi mm-hmm. is on the moon is on the moon yeah Technology. Who's flying to the moon in 2020? Oh, 2020. 2026. Ada right pergi ke bulan ke 2026? Yup, ada. Jawapannya Mas Elon juga. <laughs> Elon, Mas Elon juga. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Mas Elon is going to the moon in 2026. In But Allah. that's that's yeah. like on a, a NASA punya budget ke siapa tu? Ke dia ada ride sharing masa tu? Ada ride sharing juga. So for our case, kita bukan directly dengan SpaceX, tumpang uh, naik roket SpaceX. We are working with uh, a specific US based uh, space company, a moon company actually, which Alhamdulillah kita dah secure agreement dengan dia orang. Uh, it's called Astrolab. Oh, Astrolab. Okay. Yeah. So what they do, they are do two things. Uh, their main business is they are building a huge rover, satu kereta besar untuk dua. Ada satu astronaut boleh duduk atas kereta tu. Mm-hmm. Another one is apa-apa barang semua orang nak sumbat tumpang dalam kereta tu. I see, I see. Uh, so that's where kita punya teknologi demonstrasi which we are working on. Uh, kita tumpang masuk dalam kereta dia orang, Astrolab punya kereta where this kereta itself akan duduk dalam SpaceX punya roket. Okay. And this SpaceX punya roket is not the for all the space uh, fan siapa yang nak tahu dekat luar. Uh, yang nak pergi ke bulan bukan pakai Falcon 9 punya roket yang roket sekarang ni is a latest new rocket panggil Starship. Okay. That Starship is uh, the biggest ever rocket that is currently being built by human beings. Mm. So that is in 2026. Uh-huh. 2025 the technology demonstrator dekat satellite tu dengan siapa? Yang tadi tu dengan Astrolab, yang yeah. yang dia dengan Spaceium lah. Uh, dengan untuk low orbit It's not finalized yet. Oh. Bila... Tadi partner dengan Spaceium tadi kata? Ya, yeah. uh, but not exactly untuk 
nak launching tu belum lagi. Oh launching belum lagi. Launching belum lagi. So okay. yang 2025 ni Spacium akan launch dia punya R&R tu lah. Ah uh-uh, betul betul. So you are, you will be a component on that R&R. Exactly. Yeah. So dia orang punya cerita since the client satellite is coming to their satellite what's the distance that you're working on? Okay, yeah. Clearly dia nak kena ada physical contact kan dia nak transfer betul. physical propellant kan? Betul so betul. That is the 50 mm good enough? Uh, actually as long, bila dah jarak 1 km tu kalau in the short term lah 1 km dah boleh charge dah so, sementara dia tengah nak docking pun kita dah boleh charge dah ok but yeah. they will be docking for how long? Uh, if they docking for like a few hours you you is that 50 meter yang you cakap yang nak buat kat sini is that the distance that you're looking where you're going to be macam mana? yang tu there is a specific number how long they need to take in order to refuel but definitely that is actually enough lah sebab semasa di docking makin lama makin dekat kita boleh je lagi lagi best lah contoh sebab jarak dekat hmm. so by why, why would you transmit energy when they are far when you can just wait until they come in contact boleh juga you'd be wasting energy dah uh, over, over long distance as long as kalau dah masuk coverage tu boleh dah so This, the efficiency tak ada improve dramatically as they come closer yes yes actually improve uh, 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 sebab uh. dia makin lama makin dekat uh. jarak tu kita like efficiency tu memang lagi increase sebab lagi dekat dia efficient, lagi efficient lah sebenarnya right, 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 uh, right, right, yeah. right, right. but the specific details of our uh, bilateral partnership dengan Spatial is actually it doesn't include specifically kita nak launch sama-sama dengan dia orang oh. the partnership itself entails uh, what is the kind of like the transaction is so for our side apa yang kita like buy service from them if dia orang robotic arm installkan receiver for the satellite lain. Oh, I see, see, yeah. see. And then what they are kind of like buying from us is the orang punya charging station dekat uh, RNR dia orang tu akan pakai teknologi kita orang. I see, see, yeah. see, see, see. Yeah. So oh. in terms of kalau year 25 kita nak buat teknologi demonstrasi around the earth bukan bulan dia around the earth that is something that is where we are still exploring lah. So apabila kita pergi ke US, we have talked to some companies, we are exploring on that lah. Right, 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 right. right. But, but you are confident that in 2025, you'll have something to space demonstration and Very kilowatt close. power level already. For that, that, definitely, the specifikasi tu lagi rendah lah. Um, maybe only a few watts, also jarak pun lagi dekat. Uh, but when it comes to confidence, if I, if I may share, uh, of course, this is a extremely high risk extremely high risk when i was listening to interviews of not only like nasa scientists mm. engineers semua mm. like dia orang pergi lagi dah syarat risiko dia lagi tinggi dia orang bina satu teleskop ni berbilion dollar per harga mm-hmm. uh, it's called james webb mm-hmm. space telescope JWST. yeah jwst which mm-hmm. dah dah berjaya dah lah mm. apabila this interview tanya dia how confident are you bila yang ni lancar semua semua everything goes well jawapan dia adalah when it comes to confidence actually my own interpretation is not a reliable kind of kind of like measurement confident how confident are you or boleh berjaya ni but rather secara akurinya what we do is every time apabila kita risau we risau lah part ni nanti kalau tak menjadi macam mana pula kan it's okay go look go dissect what are you worried about if it is legit worry you have, you have to solve it find the solution if it is not legit uh, it's okay just go sleep uh, sometimes like that is why that is why like physics ni hukum physics ni is like Elon say physics is very unforgiving you, no matter how confident you are orang kata if dari segi Islam kalau itaqullah kalau memang tak menjadi memang tak menjadi uh, so that is why for our case we don't really at least for me uh, learning from this kind of NASA scientists we emphasize more on really the technical risk aspect rather than how confident are we because it's also very subjective kita confident ke tak even 100% pun there might be technical risks that we are not aware of that's where the mentality is a bit different now. So, yeah. hmm. the space industry is also undergoing a huge revolution lah, <coughs> thanks to rocket yang boleh turun balik kan lah. betul betul and that makes space launching a lot more affordable lah. a lot more not affordable. cheap but affordable lah at least kan lah. yeah how is that changing the way that you are thinking about this because now you, you i mean the three rockets a week going up 
Ya. Masih lah nanti tiga roket seminggu kan. Exactly. So, it's almost like a schedule already. Boleh tunggu seminggu tiga kali. Kalau tak naik tiga kali, you're wondering. Was it the weather? Was exactly. it what's going on, right? Uh, so, exactly. is that changing anything? Absolutely. In fact, like the innovations of SpaceX rocket being able to land, if we look at the numbers, we are talking about reducing like minus 90% mm-hmm. of cost. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, $1 million dollar per cost, mm-hmm. it goes all the way down to $100,000. Uh, mm-hmm. It's how much cheap. And yeah. because of that, because of that, one of the example of impact, we can identify, we have climate change. So, but we can send more satellites, so, but it is very cheap. Uh, we can send more satellite, justifiable, and we can measure our, our Earth health. And with that, we can have more accurate data, another impact more. Just like how, actually the best analogy here is actually smartphone. Zaman dulu, phones is like very big, mm. chunky, can only do phone calls. But with the progression of cheaper component, and also powerful components, more people can have smartphones. And from having like, more people have smartphones cheaper, although ada yang mahal, like, macam iPhone lah kan. Mm. Uh, apabila it is accessible, uh, like smartphones being accessible to everyday people on earth, we have gig economies. We have Grab, Food Panda, and everything. It it really multiplies the 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 the, the size of, of the market itself. Same, just like the innovation of rocket launching. When the launching itself is way cheaper, satellite is can be easily not only accessible but implemented by many countries in the world. Excellent. So we'll take a break on that note lah tentang global punya changes. Then maybe lepas ni kita boleh sambung balik dengan apa the impact on the Malaysian side, you know, in terms of our technology, in terms of the things that we need to learn about after the break. 